Hey everybody, Ryan back again here. Uh, today, out here in the service truck, I uh, got my laptop out. It's a pretty nice day here. I uh, just went down into Kenworth to Canton and did a uh, pre and uh, pre-purchase inspection for a gentleman. Uh, I was looking at the truck, but unfortunately, from the time that um, I left there and got back home, the truck uh, got a deposit put back down on it. So it, uh, it's uh, definitely not a uh, buyer's market out here for used trucks right now, unfortunately. Um, yeah, just the uh, price is really, I think, inflated and, and uh, things are selling really quick. Um, so, I mean, if you find something you want, uh, I'd, in, in, I'd get some money down on it pretty quick to hold on to it because it might not be there unfortunately so it's uh unfortunate when things happen like that so i guess i got another one and we're gonna try to work something out on that one because this one really uh had that uh, jaw to test hooked up to it i can do a uh engine abuse uh check and all that i mean a lot of different functions which we'll go into that's not this video so i'll go into that later but actually um i'm getting ready to call landstar here and um let them know that i'm going to be leaving so with the with the new business and all that uh, so i need to call them let them know what's going on so i just had a few pointers or um a couple things you need to do before you make that call um couple, some information you need to pull and all that because um, one thing number one thing is once you call your carrier there's a good chance you're going to lose all your access to the load boards uh paste of com data things like that um, so it'd be a lot more difficult to get certain items after the fact, after you leave and you lose those, those accesses. So, um, so number one thing guys is, you know, is be professional. This is a business decision. Um, as you know, you guys that watch me, I'm, I've been with Landstar. I've actually been with them twice. I left once on really good terms and everything. It wasn't, didn't have anything to do with them. Um, just decided to, I had a lease truck and I decided to, had it for two years, decided to get, just to turn it back in. Um, it was an SFI truck, so um, so I ended that with them, and that's why I left. It was because of the truck. So um, so left on good terms. Uh, sent all their stuff back. Uh, got everything I needed, and um, and like I said, when I wanted to come back, it wasn't everything went pretty smooth and came right back. And and um, so now I'm leaving this time to get out of truck driving, basically. So um, still haven't decided what I'm doing with my truck yet. I've had a couple other opportunities come up that I'm kind of kicking around. So. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what exactly what we're gonna do with the truck yet. So anyways, um, like I said, number one thing, this is a business decision. It's either you don't like the carrier where you're at, it doesn't work out for you, don't work out for your personality. Um, you're not making the money you wanna make. Uh, this, it could be any reason. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be emotional. Um, just be professional with these people because you never know, you might wanna come back sometime so you don't wanna burn a bridge. Um, so that's the first thing. Uh, second thing, you're going to want to get your fuel card data i mean transactions for your taxes um so we ha we use com data at landstar so you have to use the iConnect uh website here with com data and actually i've got the hour on the tracks i've set up right now um so you're going to need to get that data for your taxes because um, that's what i always pull when i do my taxes i pull all my fuel card data and i get that final number how much money i spent off of that fuel card because the only thing i use my fuel card for is fuel i don't buy nothing else with it so the number on there that i spent is how much fuel i used a year so i don't need to save all my receipts and all that and, and go through all those because i get a nice one big number at the end um, so I always, I pull that data. So I'm going to pull that here from January 1st until today. And the other thing is uh, your log books uh, for your taxes as well for the days that you're out for per diem. You're going to want to have that info. Um, so Landstar, we use OmniTrax. So you can go to the dhos.omnitrax.com website. Um, and your carrier, whoever you're with, if you're with Landstar, you'll have, uh, there's four pieces of information you're going to need. You're going to need the carrier name as it goes into the OmniTrax system. Uh, you're going to need your driver ID, uh, your password that you use for your for your ELD, and also your last name. I hope you know that. So, um, so you need those four pieces of information to get into this website. Once you get in there, um, you can pull three months. You can the most you can do is three months. So um, you should be, if you aren't already, you should be pulling those reports every three days. You know, get a PDF, and um, then you can track how many days you're out, and you have that for proof if you ever get audited by the IRS or something. So. I'm into that website right now, um, and I'll show you this here in a second. Uh, but again, the other website, I'm gonna tell you the websites first, and I'll come back and actually go in. Um, so the other one's the, uh, the iConnectData.com. 
um, and that is the Com Data app here. So uh, that's where you're going to go to get your. You should have that registered for your fuel card, and you can register it for your settlement card as well if you want. But I don't really need that information as much. Um, so, so this is where you want to go to have your to get your fuel card data. So we'll go ahead and um, I'm gonna log into both of these. And we'll look at the um, hours of service first. So let me switch this around. Okay, sorry I don't have the fancy screen recording software like my wife does. I need to get it put on this for the new business. Uh, so this is the Omnitrax uh, website. You can basically, you can control, you can change your change of status and all that stuff on here if you want to. Um, but what I use is this report. Go to that. And like I said, you can do a three month range. So we'll go back to, uh, don't want that. Go to March, uh, we'll just put 18th. So we can, you have USA format, if you're in the US. And obviously, all right. <laughs> now it's not going to work. <laughs> okay, so we're having technical difficulties here for some reason. Um, so anyways, what this would normally do is load a PDF with um, basically your logs, and then you could print those. You could just save them as a PDF. You don't have to print them out, just as long as you have them, you know, in your possession. So you want to have those. So that's that. That's really what you need to pull is your logs, so you have a copy of them for your taxes or whatever other reason may come arise after you've left the carrier. So that is that. That's the on the track site. No, oh, that's why it's not working because it logged me out. So. Try this again. And don't want to show, I mean, it don't really matter anyways. But. Okay, we're logged back in here, and we'll try this one more time. <laughs> I'm just going to go back a month here, so I'm not overloading this thing. And it blocked it, pop-up blocker came up and blocked it from coming up. Okay, there we go. So this basically gives me all of my like paper logs per se shows all the change of duty statuses and all that. So, so like I said, you can just save that and um, then you got it. So that's that's logs. The other thing like I said is com data. Uh, we're on here, so we're just gonna go to summary, select dates, and then I'm gonna go back to January first. Display summary. And it's, it's working up there, but uh, sometimes it can be slow. Okay, so there's all my data or how much i spent on fuel i spent seventeen thousand five hundred twenty two dollars and 71 cents on fuel this year so um 
it was a beginning balance from last or an ending balance from last year that carried over but this is actually how much i spent this year so um so that's pretty much it so i just what i do on this is just do a um just print the pdf Um, 2000 and there I have uh, what I spent for my taxes the when I do my tax return next year and uh, I've got a question before yeah my, my first name is Timothy so I go by my middle name because my, my dad and I have the same first name. So we have different middle names, but um, I go by my middle name. So I always get questions why it's why it says Timothy Fox and I go by Ryan. Um, that's a story why, but I get tired of explaining that. So, um, yeah, so I just keep leave it how it is. So um, where was that here? So so that's pretty much it, guys, as far as uh, well, there's a couple other things, but let me turn this around and we'll talk about that. Okay, so yeah, the main thing is get all the documents you're gonna need. When you when you call them, make sure you got a good address on file where they can send your 1099 next year. And if you're moving or something, um, keep in contact with that carrier. If you move and, and you know call them, hey, I'm moving to this address and that's where I'm gonna need my 1099 sent to next year. Um, Cause that can hold you up with filing your taxes and all that. So um, it's always just good to keep a good rapport, stay in contact. I know some people have nasty experiences, but um, it's, it doesn't, I don't know. I've always tried to leave on a good note um, with somebody. I don't want to burn a bridge or something like that. So you just you just never know. You might go to a place that's you know got the greenest grass on earth and and um, you know green <laughs> greenest grass on on earth and then uh, you may decide you don't like or you get fired from there or you don't like it. Then you might have to come back to the last place you were at. So um, you never know what's going to happen. So like I said, just do everything professional. Um, and take care of yourself first. Like I said, get all the documentation you're going to need for your taxes or whatever you're going to need. Get all that stuff before you pull the trigger. Because like I said, I, I at Landstar, last time I left Landstar, they, I had access to everything for like two days. Um, but I think when I left Snyder, they had me shut off like within 30 minutes. I didn't have access to anything anymore. So it can happen quick. Um, so just make sure you have everything you need. Um, the other thing, you have an, most companies or about everybody I've worked for has an escrow account. Um, so they usually get that back to you within 45 days, but it can be dependent on how quick you get everything sent back in. I know Landstar, they want their license plate back. They want you to peel all the IFTA stickers off, uh, your door stickers and all that. And uh, all this, you got to send all, even if it's all like torn up and everything, um, you got to send all that stuff back to them. And the quicker you get that stuff back to them, the quicker you're going to get your money back, basically. They can process everything. So... Um, I was right at the time for my plate renewal with Landstar, and um, I kind of tipped them off that um, I'm not wasn't going to be staying, so my plate isn't going to get renewed. So my plate's already paid for. So, um, but let's say if you had six months left on your plate with Landstar, they will once you send that plate back in. That's no reason to get this stuff in as quick as possible, especially like if you have you know proration on your plate. Um, get that plate in as soon as possible because the quicker it gets back they can put that plate in line to be resold to a new BCO or somebody else coming in. And um, then you'll get that, per, whenever the day that they sell it, if there's five months left on that plate, you'll get that money back to you. So get that plate in as soon as possible. Get all this stuff in as soon as possible. So, and you know, whatever you owe them, get it back in. I mean, there's always people bellyaching and all that, you hold my money and they're not giving me this and all that. I mean, it's like, okay, did you send everything back? Well, I've been, I haven't had time, so. Um, get all that stuff, get all their stuff back as soon as possible and give them what they want and you'll get whatever they owe you. You'll get it back and all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, just, just, just follow check all the boxes and do what you're supposed to do. And, uh, you know, I've, I've never, never got screwed by anything. I've dealt with Snyder as an owner operator, SS Snyder finance, SFI trucks. I've dealt with them, um, Landstar, Mercer and Landstar again. And, um, I've, done everything they asked me to do and and got everything back in a timely manner and i've always gotten what they owe me back and, and never got screwed by anything by anybody even with sfi um you know i i, I had a lot of money i had like nine thousand dollars in my maintenance account with them 
Um, and I used part of that for my turn-in fee, but after, after everything was said and done, they sent me, I had, they direct deposited what they owed, they didn't even send me a check. I mean, Landstar, they'll send you a check for like your escrow and all that after everything, you know, because you'll probably have some fuel tax from the month before and all that that'll get, that'll get divvied out and all that good stuff. But um, I know with SFI, they sent me a direct deposit like within three days after I sent them everything they needed, so it was really quick. Um, and it was, everything was, the numbers were all right and all that stuff too. Um, but yeah, like I said, normally the carriers, when you quit or leave, whatever, they're going to send you a check or whatever for what the escrow, difference in the escrow and all that is. So, but that's pretty much it, guys. I just, like I said, wanted to go up before I pulled the trigger here. Just wanted to go over that stuff. And um, like I said, I hate hate leaving someplace. It's always hard to quit a place, a job or a carrier. I mean, unless it's just totally miserable, I guess. But um, I've always, I've liked Landstar a lot. It's a good company. Um, if I ever decide to drive again for some reason, um That'd be the first place I go knocking, most likely. Um, not really interested in the own authority thing, which I might talk about that at another time. I've rolled the numbers and all that, but that's another another topic as well. So anyways, I uh, just thought I'd throw that out there, and I'm getting ready to make my phone call here, and um, that'd be pretty much it, I guess. So I'll be kind of starting the new... We are, I already started a new thing, but kind of moving on with a new thing here. So, um, And we've got a lot coming up uh, on YouTube as far as new stuff, so... Keep your eyes out uh, for that. Um, like I said, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Uh, hit the bell for the updates, like the video, and um, be sure to check out our farming channel as well if you're interested in old tractors and newer tractors. And uh, I gotta go bail some hay today, so um, always something always something going on around here. So, um, so check that out as well. We always put the link for that channel in. Um, so again, thanks for all the support and the views. Um, had a lot of people calling me about the new business for service out of state. Really appreciate those calls. And um, like I said, if anybody's coming to the North East Ohio area and you need something done, uh, be sure to check us, check us out on our website. So thanks again for watching the support. We'll see you next time.